Test, one, two, one, two, test, test. Testing, one, two, one, two. Well, good morning. Welcome to Grace Baptist this morning. Let's stand and welcome each other to the service. Well, good morning once again. Come on in if you would. Come on in and find a seat. Come on in, find your place. And make note of your bulletin if you would. Should have received one on the way in. If you didn't, let me know and I can uh, reprimand our head ushers. If I can have the ushers close the auditorium doors this time, that would be very helpful. On the front of your bulletin then uh, is missing, but it should be there. At 6 p.m. tonight is our couple's night out. 6 o'clock tonight is our couple's night out is our last session for this series, Building Your Marriage to Last. And so those that are, have been a part of it, 
There's certainly, I uh, hope everybody can make it out tonight. Um, uh, if you haven't been a part of it, you're certainly welcome as well. Uh, in light of that then, following this morning's service, if we can have some people stick around afterwards and we'll dismantle this middle section of pews, uh, they're not pews, chairs, and uh, put some tables out for tonight's uh, couple's night out uh, ministry. So looking forward to that this evening starting at 6 we will be immediately then in the month of April starting into our next series, which is Building Up Your Spouse. Uh, hopefully by next Sunday there will be a sign-up sheet out on the Welcome Center for that. And we would love to have the couples from the first session. And it's a new session, so you're not missing anything. If you want to be a part of this, we would love to have every couple uh, come and be a part of this ministry. Uh, we are certainly looking for couples that have been married any length of time. You might think, well, our marriage doesn't need any work, we're good. First of all, you're wrong, uh, but secondly, <laughs> even if you feel like you've been down the path, it's very, very helpful to have you at the table with individuals who are not yet married or newly married. We need everyone, and so we would love to have you for this Couples Night Out ministry, and as we start a next series, uh, please feel free uh, to join us. If you then open your bulletins, please, and as you see there, a number of things happening in March. Uh, Next Sunday, there won't be any Sunday school or anything in the evening. It's the Sunday of March break. But the Sunday after that at 6.30 is our jam night. Wednesday, March 27th is our new members class. If you're interested in becoming a member at Grace Baptist, we would love to have you. We're having a games night on March 30th. So if you note one of your uh, bulletin inserts, Saturday, March 30th at 6 p.m. If you have a board game, Crokinole, Scrabble, uh, any games that you like to play, uh, bring those with you. We'll have some tables set up here in the auditorium, which is a great time to fellowship together as a church family. Um, I always find it hilarious uh, when uh, some of the younger people who think they're good at everything get beaten handily uh, by, by uh, other people at like, things like crokinoles. So, um, but we're just really looking forward to a good time together, um, a church uh, community, building community together at our games night. Then on March 31st, the last Sunday of, of this month, after the morning service, there is a meal for newcomers. You'll also note that in your bulletin insert, a newcomer's lunch, so immediately following the morning service on March 31st. If you've been attending Grace Baptist uh, somewhat regularly, you're part of us uh, and have only been doing so in the last year, we would love to have you be a part of that. It's an opportunity for you to meet some of the church leadership. It's an opportunity for us to meet you and get to know you better. There's a sign-up sheet out at the Welcome Center. We would love to have you be a part of that, and uh, so please sign up there. And uh, if you don't sign up, we know who you are, and we'll be coming and inviting you personally. So we would love to have you be a part of that. And then on that evening, March 31st, is our theology forum. Uh, hopefully we'll have it. If we don't have it, it was not meant to be. <laughs> Huge congratulations to John and Sue, Taylor and Joe. Um, Henrik William James was born on March 8th, so weighing in at 5 pounds, 15 ounces. There's no way that John and Sue are grandparents. It's just not, it's not true. <laughs> uh, we were, uh, Judy was holding off on the bulletin, holding off on the bulletin, and then the news came in and we printed it, and so big congratulations to Joe and Taylor. Uh, Wainwright, uh, exciting news to be sure. On the other side of your bulletin then, uh, we have our ladies' night out coming up this Tuesday night at 6.30. Uh, excellent ministry, still walking through the book of First Peter with Jen Wilkin. Our uh, college and career uh, dinner and Bible study Thursday at uh, 7. Uh, and then other things there in the bulletin. We'll continue to pray for the Divinis and our Fellowship Atlantic uh, uh, churches. There is a baby shower for Megan Crozier at Sasha O'Hanley's home on Saturday, March 16th at 3 p.m., and uh, so if you would like to be a part of that, see Sasha. Sasha, where are you? You're normally right there you are. Yep, there she is, waving her hand. So um, if you want to uh, participate in that. And then uh, we are considering uh, Andre Dumas as a potential future elder at Grace Baptist. In light of that, we're asking everyone to participate in that process at the Welcome Center. There are some surveys. It essentially walks through the qualifications for an elder in 1 Timothy 3 and Titus 1. There's about 20 questions. We ask that on the front, you simply answer one of three questions. How well do you know the Dumas's, Andre and Marie Jose? And then walk through the survey in light of that. Uh, and there's basically, I agree, I disagree, or I don't know. And then areas for comments. And so we would love you to take that survey, fill that out, and then return it here at the Welcome Center. 
And uh, we're very excited at what God uh, is, is, we believe God is doing. And so pray for the Dumas's as they continue to look forward to this. Lastly, in your bulletin, there should be an insert there. Uh, Science Fair 2019 just happened this week. And a big uh, congratulations to our winners. Uh, just keeping everybody informed what's going on at GCS. Uh, lots happening. And, uh, and then uh, enrollment. Uh, we're currently accepting applications for the 2019-2020 school year. Uh, as well as a need of staff. And uh, again, as mentioned, we have actually had a couple register their child and the child has not yet been born. And that's going to be a necessity moving forward because we only have so many spots. So uh, thank you for your prayers for the ministry of Grace Christian School. I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward at this time then and let's uh, continue our service uh, in prayer this morning. Father, we want to again come before you this morning and just thank you. So many blessings. You bless us in so many ways. And the greatest way you have blessed us is to make us your own. And so we pray for those here this morning that are your children. May they rejoice in that. May they know that they belong. Uh, Father, we are looking forward to wrapping up chapter 2 of Ephesians this morning and just seeing again the depth of relationship and the reality of our relationship with you. What a beautiful truth, and we thank you for how Paul articulates it and has, it has been preserved for us. And so, Father, perhaps some are here this morning and do not feel like they belong for any number of reasons. May they know that if they are in Christ, they belong. They are not just begrudgingly added to a list. They are welcomed and embraced as family. And may that be uh, true and not only in our minds this morning, but also in our hearts. For those that are here this morning and are not sure, they have questions, they have concerns, they have hurts. Father, I pray that they would hear the good news that although we are great sinners, there is a great Savior, Jesus Christ the righteous, who can make us new, make us whole, heal us, can bring us into your family and bring us all the way home. So Father, may any that do not know you this morning, Come to know you even this morning, we pray. So Father, as we continue through our service, we want to give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory, for you alone are worthy, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As they pass the plates and just before our music team takes over, we do have a video this morning. Uh, we are about five, seven weeks out, I guess, from Easter and the Easter season. And so in, in line of that, or in, as we move towards that, uh, each Sunday morning moving forward, we want to kind of uh, bring your attention uh, to uh, these realities. And so there's some videos we have of the Psalms. And so during this season, as we move towards celebrating the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord, uh, sit back if you would. Let's watch this video as it leads us into uh, worship, corporate worship this morning.
Well, good morning, Grace Baptist. Awesome. It's nice to hear from you. Um, as we get started this morning, we're going to have Beth uh, read our call to worship from the Psalms. Psalm 84, 1 through 4. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. Amen. Can you do me a favor? Can you stand with us as we get started? Stretch our legs. And uh, I wanted to give a warm welcome to all the followers from Grace Christian School YouTube channel, because that's currently what we're streaming to. <laughs> There's always something some element of Sunday that humbles me. And it's preparation this morning because we had a basketball game this past week and if you missed it, you can watch it on the channel. Um, I didn't change the channel back to Grace Baptist Church. So we have a new audience this morning. <laughs> so uh, it's probably gonna wake people up at 4 a.m. because there's a lot of internationals that get notified of that channel. So I think that's great. So an extra warm welcome to our Grace Christian School. Uh, we did share it on our page, so our normal followers will follow along. Um, and be in prayer for those who watch online. I'll just say that caveat. Um, many don't know. Um, the reason we do it isn't because we think we're awesome. Um, the reason we do it is because we think Jesus is awesome, but because it's also free to do it, and because there are people that cannot come to church. They can't physically get here. So we have people that watch faithfully every single week and are part of this Grace Christian community and rely on the service. So if you ever wondered why we do the things that we do, there's always a reason, and it's always because we want to reach out to people. So that's my little uh, live stream speech. In case you wondered why we have cameras and, and film things, it's, it's not just for here. It's actually for those that watch elsewhere. All right, now let's sing. We're going to sing Your Grace is Enough. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still Your 
right, I'm going to read from Colossians with reverb. (laughs) Chapter 1, verses 21 to 23, for added effect. And you, who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. If indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and in which I, Paul, became a minister. Now we're going to sing How Great Thou Art. All right, here we go. Oh, Lord, I know when I in awesome Great thou art. 
Great singing, great singing. We're going to continue to worship in reading scripture, and Tracy's going to help us do that. Uh, John 17 says, I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them even as you loved me. commands all the hosts of heaven who else can make every king bow down who else can whisper in darkness tremble only a holy God what other beauty shines the sun what are the majesty rules with justice only a holy God come and behold come and behold him the one and the only cry out sing home
you have a seat for a second. We can catch our breath. Isn't God amazing? This is the time when we can take our eyes off of ourself and just focus on the Holy One. And uh, what better way to do it than to take his scriptures and put it to song? Because God is the creator of music, and it's amazing to be able to do that. Let's continue to sing, You Will Hold Me Fast. When I fear my faith will fail, Christ will hold. We thank you so much. We thank you that we are in your arms and we thank you that you are all powerful because we are not. We thank you that you've created us in your image and we, it just blows our mind that we can be in your presence because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, we can come behold the wondrous mystery that we're going to sing next. It is mystery that you'd want to do that. And we don't understand sometimes your ways, but because you're sovereign and because you are overall, we can trust you. Whether we're looking at the world around us in confusion, wondering how it could be such a place, looking for goodness and mercy and faithfulness and not seeing it, Lord, but we see it in you and in you we trust. And because of that, we can trust in the mystery of the gospel, why you would come to send your son to die on a cross for us, 
that we as dirty, rotten sinners can come to you by faith with nothing but ourselves and our hearts and you transform us and it's your work and not ours, Lord. So renew us this morning as we continue to sing. Let us come behold your mystery this morning. Let's sing together. Bibles, if you would, and turn to the book of Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, 
And this morning we're going to be looking at verses 19 through 22, Lord willing. Verses 19 through 22, Lord willing. Welcome. We hope that you feel welcome here. Uh, If you are new to us, uh, we appreciate that you are with us. Uh, If you came this morning and you don't have a Bible, we bought brand new ones. So they should be somewhere there along the chairs, hard cover. We spared no expense. (laughs) Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19, in that Bible, it starts on page 918, 918. So just when you had the page number memorized, we switch Bibles on you. If you don't have a Bible, we'd love to give you one. And so on your way out, we have some extras in the Welcome Center. Uh, We would love for you to have a copy of the Word of God in your possession. So again, thank you for being here. As you know, for those of you that regularly attend, uh, we are in the book of Ephesians, and hopefully this morning we'll be finishing up chapter 2. Chapter 2 is really a hinge uh, chapter in the book. It really brings together the theological and philosophical concepts and realities that Paul has expressed for us in chapter 1 and leads us into the application of those in chapters three through six. And what a marvelous, wonderful, deeply rich book this is, letter this is. And this chapter, I hope, has been uh, beneficial to your soul. Where we wanna go this morning then is the idea of community and belonging. To be in community with each other is to feel like you belong. This is a place, a group, a Um, community that you are a part of. You are welcome. You are missed if you are not here. This is your group. This is home. And what Paul does for us in verses 19 through 22, and one of the reasons why we split that section up, because really verses 11 through 22 could have been its own section, but we stopped at verse 18 last Sunday because here Paul goes even deeper And there are at least three metaphors that he uses uh, for who we now are, this type of community that we have in Jesus Christ. And so I want to introduce our topic this morning, and then we're going to read God's word together, these four verses, and then we're just going to apply it this morning and see what God has for us from the text. And so we hope that you feel like, if you are a part of Grace Baptist Church, that you belong here. That you don't have to fight your way in, that you don't feel uneasy, that you don't feel like at any moment your participation with us, your uh, cooperation with us, your being a part of us will suddenly be pulled away from you and you'll be on the outside looking in. We pray that you do really feel like you belong because anyone who is a believer in Jesus Christ, who has a relationship with God the Father because of Christ through the Spirit, belongs, and we pray that you feel that way here. That's what we're trying to build here at Grace Baptist, this true sense of community. But let me ask you this morning, has there ever been a time in your life where you have felt that you didn't belong? Okay, somebody at the back, excellent, all right, all right. I I think all of us in some way at some time have felt like we just don't belong here. We're not a part of this group. One of the ways that we feel like we don't belong is that we have a lack of shared experience. So there's a group that has had a shared experience together. We were not a part of that group, and so we lack that shared experience. Have you ever not gotten an inside joke? (laughs) Because you weren't on the inside? (laughs) So you're with a group, even a group that you feel kind of a part of, and yet you weren't there for a shared shared experience, and they're joking about it and sort of ribbing each other over it, and you just really feel like you're on the outside looking in because you don't have that shared experience. Some of that can be cultural, that you, you've been brought into a group, but there's a shared experience that predates your entrance into the group. And so there's history. So, you know, when you, even as you get married to your spouse, there's a whole part of their life that you were not around for, generally speaking, unless you knew each other in the church nursery or something, which happens, but... Uh, So they have a shared experience that predates your shared experience. 
Sometimes, again, it's cultural in the sense of, of when you meet somebody and you're now friends, but they have a, a cultural experience that predates your experience with them. Some of it's even linguistic. You're with a group, and then they don't want you to know what they're talking about, so they switch to another language. Has that ever happened to you? It's happened to me all the time, right? It's even happened to me with my wife's family. Why are they suddenly talking Dutch? Uh-oh, I screwed up again. No, I'm joking, I do belong to the Fleetsters. I'm very thankful for them, but we, uh, we, we, we don't have those shared experiences. That can, that can make us feel like we don't belong. We're not truly part of the group in some ways. We can also feel that we don't belong even in a crowd because of loneliness. I remember this experience very vividly I was a youth group leader or called upon to be a leader for a particular event. And so we uh, put all the youth group into a, a vehicle and myself and two other couples. At the time I was single, we drove to this event, big youth event, there was a big farmer's field. The farmer for a number of years had graciously donated this part of the field. They had all kinds of uh, booths set up from different colleges and different ministries. There was activities to do. There was a big tent where there was uh, meeting, uh, music, and preaching. And in that crowd of maybe a, a thousand people, I've never felt more like I didn't belong. You can be surrounded by people and feel like you don't belong because you are on sort of, you feel like you're on the outside looking in. That there, there's just a loneliness. I'm not part of this, this group. And so there's different reasons why we can feel that we don't belong. And I pray this morning that what you see from the text is that if you are in Christ, you belong. You belong in an expansive sense and you belong in a deep sense. We've already sort of touched on the expanse of our belonging in that regardless of our background, culturally, linguistically, socially, financially, in Christ, we are all one. Paul's gonna pick back up on this theme in chapter three, verse 14, and then, and then in chapter four, verses one and following. He wanna talk about this idea of unity. And some of the passages that you, we had read as part of our liturgy this morning, we saw that sense that Jesus says to his disciples, in me you are one. And so we, we want that reality to be there, uh, certainly. So regardless of whatever sort of types of divisions that exist, the gospel does not segregate. The gospel does not divide, the gospel unites. And so we've, we've, we've sort of dived, dove pretty deep into that last week. But this week we're gonna expand on it even more because Paul uses the word family. And the expanse of the group that we belong to is so much bigger than our gathering here this morning. It began on the other side of the globe this morning. And individuals in New Zealand and Australia have already worshiped God, sung perhaps even the same songs that we have sung here this morning. And as the time moved an hour ahead <laughs> and progressively east to west, we are now worshiping God together. And yet today, our brothers and sisters west of us will also worship God. Today. We are part of something that is so much bigger than us. One of the many reasons that we highlight our missionary family, one of the reasons we highlight even our Fellowship Atlantic family, the, the 20 congregations that we're a part of, which is a small part of the over 500 congregations that we're a part of across Canada. We're part of something bigger, and Paul's going to expand that uh, reach, that scope for us this morning. But there's also a depth, and Paul wants to drill down here in verses 19 through 22. And say it's not just a community based on mutual shared interest or shared experience. You can build community based on interest in any number of things. There's clubs for that. But what the gospel does is it makes us belong. It makes us family. You know what it's like to be home. That you're in places where you don't feel quite like you fit. But when you go home, this is my 
place. I belong here. I'm supposed to be here. And I pray that you feel that as a part of Grace Baptist and the broader Christian community. You belong. You are a part of what God is doing if you are in Christ here this morning. So let's go to the text, read the text, and we want to apply it uh, this morning uh, together. So, in Ephesians chapter 2, and we will start reading at verse 19 here this morning. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure, being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. This is the word of God. What does Paul say that we are, starting in verse 19? First of all, in the first part of verse 19, we have a new citizenship. How many of you have traveled outside of Canada? All right. What do you need in order to do so? You've got to have a passport. It's a tangible reminder that you don't have citizenship where you're going. I was vividly reminded of this when I led a team of youth, teenagers, to Ireland. And our first day there, one of my teens come to, came to me and said, uh, Pastor Jeff, I lost my passport. Yeah, I was walking down to the beach with my passport and uh, it fell into the water. Okay, so why were you walking down the beach with your passport? <laughs> Okay, amazingly, in the sovereignty of God, the passport was found, it washed up on the same beach, but it was ruined. And so now what are we going to do? So I called, or I talked to the sort of leaders that were there, and uh, we had to go down to Dublin. There was a Canadian consulate down there. And so this teenager and I boarded a bus up Northern Ireland near Belfast, took the bus all the way down to Dublin. He thought it was a wonderful time. <laughs> We're on an adventure. And uh, I had to sit on my hands so that I wouldn't use them to strangle him. <laughs> we get down to Dublin, and I've never been to Dublin before, so I don't know where I'm going. I got a city map. Uh, thankfully, it was in English, I think. Um, I asked a number of people on the street. They all gave me different directions. Somehow in the sovereignty of God, we found our way to the Canadian consulate. And what was interesting to talk about belonging, you walk into this building, it's like on the third or fourth floor of this nondescript building in Dublin, and you walk in the doors, there's a Canadian flag, there's a McLean's magazine on the coffee table. It's almost like, oh, I'm home again. Little piece of Canada here in, in, in Ireland. Got his passports those sorts of things, work them all out. But we didn't belong there. We weren't citizens there. There's paperwork that's necessary to travel between places. And so what Paul says, he reminds them that they have a new citizenship, a citizenship that as Gentiles they didn't previously have. They were not a people. Peter will pick up on this. You who were not a people are now a people. You were not a nation are now a nation. And so we belong. We don't need a passport in the kingdom of God. We have a birth certificate, okay? We have a new citizenship. What does he begin with? He says, first of all, you're no longer strangers and aliens, sojourners, foreigners. When you travel to a place in which you do not have citizenship, you can appreciate the beauty, you can appreciate the culture, you can appreciate the food, but you don't belong there. You're not a citizen there. You're just sojourning there. You're a foreigner in a foreign country. And Paul says that's who you used to be. You used to be strangers and sojourners, strangers and aliens, foreigners. But now he says, what does he say in the second place? Now you are citizens. And I think this is such a helpful reminder to us 
That is, again, we don't need a passport for entrance into the kingdom of God. We have a birth certificate. We are citizens, supernatural born citizens, as now part of the kingdom of God. There's a band that has called themselves citizens or citizen. It's a reminder of the fact that we are now citizens of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. We belong. Our true home, then, is not here, but it's in God's presence. It's with him. This, I hope, is a glimpse of that, but it is just a glimpse. But we are citizens. We belong. A Jew could trace their citizenship back millennia. They belonged. They had tangible signs of that. Circumcision, the feasts, the different things that they participated in that linked them back all the way to Abram when God called him and made of him a great nation. We as Gentiles did not previously have that. We were not citizens, but now Paul says you are. He reminds us of what he reminded us before, previously in verses 11 to 18. You used to be on the outside looking in, but now, now you belong. You're a part of, a citizen of the kingdom of God. Just as the Old Testament nation of Israel was the people of God, you now are the people of God. You are citizens of the kingdom of heaven. But don't miss what he also says in this phrase. What does he say? You are fellow citizens with the saints. There's, there's a depth here, but there's also a breadth. The depth is that we are citizens and fellow citizens, together with those that were citizens before, of the kingdom of God. Specifically, Paul is linking Jew and Gentile together. We now have a birth certificate that says, born into the kingdom of God a supernaturally born citizen of the kingdom. But he links us also widely in, in, the, in the breadth to say, but you are fellow citizens with the saints. And, and this, this has at least two ramifications. Number one, it links us historically. Did you know that your citizenship goes back to Adam? Goes back to Abram? goes back to Moses and Naomi and Ruth and Esther and David, goes all the way back, those line of saints that go all the way back, the ones that you read about. What did Jesus say when he was here to the Sadducees? They don't believe in the resurrection. He said, I'll prove there's a resurrection. What does it say in scripture? God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not God was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What is the implication? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are still alive. When Jesus is transfigured, who comes down to be with him on the mountain? Moses and Elijah. They're still alive. And we will meet them one day if we are in Christ. We are fellow citizens with the saints. There's a historic link. How incredible is that? That is amazing. And, the, and, and, and then even in sort of quote unquote modern times that we will be hanging out in heaven with Martin Luther and, and Zwingli and John Calvin and, and Augustine and all these guys that at least I like to read because I like to read old dead guys. I don't know about everybody else, but <laughs> we're linked historically with the saints. Most if not all of you have lost dear precious saints in your life, whether it's directly related by blood, a, a father, mother, grandfather, grandmother, or friends. We're linked with them historically, but notice also to be linked as fellow citizens with the saints is to be linked geographically. We are linked together with all the saints, as I mentioned in the introduction, that around the world, regardless of the language that is spoken, regardless of the food that is eaten, regardless of the shared experiences, we belong there because we are fellow citizens with the saints. I can't tell you how amazing it is to travel and to be together with the family of God all over the globe. 
I've been blessed by God to be able to go to Portugal and Ireland, Jamaica twice, the Caribbean, St. Thomas, and, and, and other places, and to walk into church and immediately feel, this is my people. I belong here. I'm welcomed here. You can look around and you don't look like anybody else in the church. And that's okay, because you're part of the family, right? Fellow citizens with the saints, regardless of where they meet and regardless of the language that they use to praise God, all those that are in Christ Jesus are citizens of the kingdom. We belong. Notice then, Paul's gonna go even deeper because how does he finish verse 19? Not only are we fellow citizens with the saints, but he says, but you are members of the household of God. Not only do we have a new citizenship, we have a new family. We have a new family. Paul uses this language elsewhere, Galatians chapter six and other places. The household of God, members of the household of God, to be family. You know, there's a certain comfortability, familiarity with family. You act in certain ways when, you're, when it's just family that you would not act in public. You feel like you can let your guard down a bit. You can kind of chill. Those baggy sweatpants that you like to wear around the house, you wouldn't wear to church. I mean, you're welcome to, but uh, you know. There's just a level of I'm home. This is the place that I belong. I'm with people that I belong to and that they belong to me. And I just, I'm a part of this. I'm welcome here. And Paul goes deeper to say, we're not just have a new citizenship, we have a new family. Jesus said to his disciples, when his mother and his brothers are outside looking for him, and some come and say, your family is looking for you, and what does Jesus say? You are my family. You are my family. Is he denying blood ties? Is he denying familial ties? No. But he is affirming that there is a new family. Just like last Sunday when we talked about this new thing that God has made out of two different ethnic backgrounds that seemed to be irreconcilable, God has birthed something new, a new body. And so there is a new family that is born when we become part of the faith, when we become in Christ. We're home. We ought to feel then here amongst fellow Christians at home. It has always felt dissonant in the world in some ways, but it's beginning to feel even stranger, isn't it? <laughs> and you talk about people not feeling like they belong. To be fully known and fully loved is the greatest desire of a human heart, and here that can be a reality because it is in God. They're individuals that are struggling so mightily. They don't even feel like they belong in their own body. And we have the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ that is to say, you belong here. And whatever your past, whatever sins you have committed, repent and believe and be brought into a new family that is not based on blood, it is not based on shared experience. It's based on, it is based on blood actually. <laughs> not based on blood biologically, but based on the blood of Jesus Christ. To be brought into something that is new, a new family. Whether you're single, married, young or old, whatever language you speak, whatever your background, we pray that here at Grace Baptist, that this is, your place. You belong here if you are in Christ. And if you are not in Christ, come to him. <laughs> Repent and believe. You get a whole new family. A family that is both deep and that is wide. Some wider than others, but that's another topic of discussion. <laughs> Praise God for the family. Part of the household of God, he says. It's something that is new, something that is different, something that is wonderful. <laughs> Lastly then, what does he say? There is not only a new citizenship and a new family, but a new structure. Verses 20 to 22. He is building something. 
built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. There's not something new that is being built, a new structure that is being constructed. We start with Jesus as the cornerstone. Jesus is the chief cornerstone. The cornerstone, the first stone that is laid, keeps the whole building plumb. Jesus is the, the true foundation of it all. And so again, regardless of previous experiences, regardless of previous feelings, Jesus is one of us, fully human, yet fully God. And he has removed all of the hindrances, all of the roadblocks that keep us from relationship to his Father. He's done all the work as one of us to welcome us then into himself. We read those passages from John. What does Jesus pray? And did you notice the passage that Tracy read? What does it say? I do not pray just for these, but for all. Did you know that just before Christ died, he prayed for you? And what did he pray? Father, that because of me, they can all be one. We are one, Father. You and I and the Spirit, together, the Trinity, we are one. Bring them into that oneness with us and with each other. Jesus Christ removes all hindrances to full acceptance in the presence of the one who made you. What is your problem? Your problem is sin. It's not because you voted for the wrong political party. It's not because you drive the wrong car. It's not any number of things that we can point to and say, these are your problem. Your, our problem, my problem, your problem is sin. We are disconnected from the one who made us. We don't have relationship with our creator. And so he solved that problem by entering into our world and entering into human flesh, becoming one of us so that he could make of us family. Jesus then is the cornerstone. He's removed all hindrances that keep us from being rightly related to the one who made us. What is next that is laid down? Paul says the foundation is the apostles and the prophets. I submit that what he is talking about is the word of God. These are the individuals to whom the message was first given and who faithfully proclaimed it. There's some question of whether he's talking about New Testament, Old Testament, New Testament apostles, Old Testament prophets, but the wording and also the order leads me to believe that he's talking about both New Testament functions. These are individuals that proclaim to you the truth of God's word. And the truth is about Jesus, the cornerstone. The foundation then of this new structure that has been laid are those that faithfully have lived and proclaimed the word of God and the word of God who is Jesus Christ. Based on that foundation then, what is he building? He's building the superstructure of the temple and every single person who becomes a believer in Jesus Christ, who repents and believes, is added to that structure that he's building. And what is he building? He's building a new temple. He is building a, a repository for the glory of God. Now, let this blow your mind here this morning for a minute, if you would. You remember in the book of Exodus that God comes to Moses and says, I want to dwell among my people. In order to do that, I'm going to need a structure that does two things at the same time. It separates you from me so that you understand that I am holy and you are not. But it also brings you close to me so that you can understand that even though I am holy and you are not, we can have relationship with each other. And right in the middle of that camp with the 12 tribes of Israel on all four sides was the tabernacle. In the, in, the, in the back end of that, that structure, that tent, it was the Holy of Holies. And the actual Shekinah glory of God descended on that 
the same glory of God that shook the mountain. We've just read this passage this week in our Bible reading, if you're following the Robert Murray Shane Bible reading plan that we have here at the church. The people were so scared of the presence of God. There is lightning and thunder and smoke. It shakes the mountain. Anybody that touched the mountain, person or animal, would instantly die. There's a fear. And they say to Moses, yep, you, you go up the mountain. We'll, we'll stay back here and watch. <laughs> there is an awe to the, to the sheer weight of the glory of God. And yet that glory descends in the cloud by day and in the pillar of fire by night. The presence of God is there. Imagine it. At one and the same time, close and yet distant. You have the curtain that keeps the people from access. And on that curtain, you have the cherubim. Those angelic messengers tasked with protecting the holiness of God. Close, but still not the same. But the actual glory of God. Until you come to the book of Ezekiel and what happens. Ezekiel is in Babylon. And it's there that he sees the glory of God. And he scratches his head. That's not supposed to be here. That's supposed to be in Jerusalem. And he has a vision of what has happened. God's presence has left. It's gone. Without God's presence, there is no protection. There is no power. There is no stability. There is no hope. We need the presence of God. Fast forward into the New Testament. Jesus is speaking to the woman at the well. And what does the Samaritan woman say? You worship in Jerusalem. We worship in Mount Gerizim. There's a dispute about where the place there is to worship. And what does Jesus say? There is coming a time when it's not about the place, but it's about the people and about the, the, the type of worship, to worship me in spirit and in truth. It's not about who's right and who's wrong, and it's not about the place. It's about the worship, whether it's in spirit and in truth or not. So what does Jesus do on the cross? His final words, one word in Greek, to telestai, it is finished, and what happens? That veil is split. Access to the actual presence of God is opened, and not only that, but the presence of God comes in. What does Jesus say? Wait, and the Spirit of God will descend on you. And what happens in the book of Acts? They're praying in the upper room, and what happens? God's presence, that same pillar of fire from the Old Testament, that same awful, weighty presence of God that can speak and things come into existence, whole galaxies spring forth where before there was nothing from the Word of God, that presence of God that is represented by that pillar of fire comes on the believers and is also represented by pillars of fire. Where God's presence is now in people. And Paul says that's what God is building. Out of these new citizens who belong to a new family, he is now building a new structure. And it's not about a building, it's about a people who no matter where they are, and no matter who they are, if they are in him and have his Holy Spirit, he is there. His presence is in them. Do you realize that you take God with you wherever you go if you are a believer in Jesus Christ? His presence is with you as it was in the temple. And here, all of those individuals with God are now together. There should be lots of God's presence here. <laughs> And it should be evident in how we treat each other, how we worship. This is what God is building. This is community. And it means then that if you are in Christ, this is where you should be. This is the group that you are a part of. You should not feel on the outside looking in. If you are in Christ, you are a part, you belong, your family. And we hope that you feel that. And if you don't, come talk to us because that's what we want here at Grace Baptist. We, don't have, we try very hard not to have a pecking order. We try very not hard not to have insider language 
So that there's these people that have a shared experience, but these people don't. And so there's sort of groups within a group or one big family. That's the goal. That's what we're working towards because that's what God is doing. God doesn't segregate. God doesn't divide. God doesn't classify. God says, you're mine. Which means we're all together, equal, as a part of the family of God. Equally repositories of the image of God and the presence of God. Citizens of his glorious kingdom. I pray this morning that you know this, that this is reality for you. And if it is, can we A, be grateful for it? And B, can we practice it as we have been? It warms my heart to see things like yesterday morning, the men's breakfast, and people that are newer to the family, being welcomed in as if if they've always been here. That's a beautiful thing, because that's the gospel. (laughs) Welcome. In the name of Jesus Christ, welcome. And if you don't know him, if you feel this morning like you don't belong, you're on the outside looking in, there are things that are being said and praises that are being sung and you're not quite connecting. It doesn't seem real. Talk to us. We want to show you Jesus Christ who makes you belong to him, to his father, who makes you in him, changes you to become what you ought to be, what you were created to be, transforms you from the inside out, gives you new citizenship, a new birth certificate, brings you in a part of a new family and begins to build out of you, adds you onto a new thing that he is building, the temple of God. It's no longer a building in Jerusalem. It's now a people around the globe. Our God is awesome. Let's look to him in prayer this morning. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your grace, your great kindness to us. We thank you for your word that is truth and guides us into all truth. Father, I pray that we not only know this, but that we practice it, that we feel it, that it's real, that we do actually belong. It may be that there are those that are here this morning who thought they belonged to church or a church, and then were told that they didn't. Churches can and have hurts along the way. Father, may that not be the case here, Grace. Keep us from that. But also help those that have been hurt by the church to know that they are a part of the true church if they are in Christ this morning. And as Paul says in another place, who can separate us from the love of God? Nothing. And so, Father, I pray that this morning, as we see this reality of community and as we want to build that, we want that to be the culture here at Grace, we see it happening. Friendships immediately formed because of Christ. Deep things shared because of Christ. There is safety here. There is confidentiality here. There is beauty here. There is unity here. There is love here. that we are united by truth and love. Not falsely, but because of Jesus Christ, truly. So Father, for those that feel this morning that they don't belong, that they're on the outside looking in, I pray, Father, that they would repent and believe, come to faith in you, that you would Work in their heart as only you can to change them, to show them your beauty, to replace their heart of stone with a heart of flesh. Whatever they've heard about Christianity, whatever they've experienced about Christianity, may they know and see and experience you because you are true. And then, Father, this morning for those of us who are in Christ, May it be true that we belong. May that not just something that's said from the front, but that is actually a reality. 
all the way through. But there's an immediate bond because of Christ, that bond of peace that Paul talks about later on in the same book, that unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace that ties us together. Here we stand on truth in love. We check our preferences and our divisiveness and our selfishness at the door. And we are selfless, loving, serving, kind, gracious, merciful, righteous, holy, family. I pray that you'll be making that of us here at Grace Baptist. That, that would be becoming truer and truer each and every day. Thank you, Father, for our new citizenship, our new birth certificate, that we've been born again, for our new family, and for this new structure that you are building that is not a physical structure in the sense of an infrastructure building, but you are of your people by your spirit because of Christ building your temple. We have your presence with us and in us if we are yours. And we shine as lights in a dark world. Use us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to ask you to stand with us as we close our worship time together. And uh, just to mess with the band a bit, we're going to do something before we start our last song, because you guys sang so well before. You are the chorus. You are the choir. This, is, this isn't a song that is like a responsive reading or anything, but it feels that way to me every time we sing it. So I feel like we need to work up to the song. We've actually taught you this song twice already uh, for the last two weeks. Um, <clears throat> but we're going to put a little bit of a twist on it, if that's okay. <laughs> Because we have a fiddle, and you do different things with different instruments, so we we had to insert a little bit of island flair into the song. Is that okay? Are we allowed to do that? Same words. We're not changing the song, but it, it, there's a bit of a different feel. But I thought let's start with the chorus, so we can get back into the song, and then we're gonna start the song. Okay? Sorry, I'm totally disrupting the flow here, but that's what I do. So I'm going to have you sing the chorus with me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. His mercy is more. Stronger. Stronger than darkness. New every morn. Our sins, they are many. His mercy is more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. His mercy is more. More. Stronger, stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Can you, can you handle that this morning? Okay. The reason I say that is because it might be a bit quicker than you're used to singing the verses. So if you can't catch on, don't worry about it. Just follow along. And just think of every other island song you've ever sung. Just sing it this way. So can we have some fun this morning? All right. Here's your 
dismissed, I'm going to read from John 17. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. So go have a great day in Christ. You are dismissed.